Tales from My D&D Campaign. Previously, the issue still remained. The party couldn't risk teleporting back to Polaron with Dwarf Daggerface and GE7 until they could find a way to assure themselves the Warforged had not been possessed by a Dark Agent. I'm sure he's fine. Yeah, let's go. I don't want to do anything unpleasant, but we really need access to the ley line, and technically, we have a hostage. Oh god, is he appealing to the wrong <gasps> party member? She screams and falls. Coup de gras. He dies. You have two options. You're our prisoner, or we kill you right here. Germans. And he knows you're not bluffing because you already attacked his hostage. Meanwhile, the rest of the party, having met their old friends in Corso's chasm, decide to teleport back for no reason. Now, actually, in character, they don't know what's going on with Angel. So the Orc Slayer and friends attend a big feast with Don de Corso, meeting his wife, Maria, for the first time. She spends a lot of time traveling around Tark. Maria seems to be the steady hand, the businesswoman and diplomat who runs most of the actual business of their estado, while the Don dreams up and invests in various high-risk, high-reward ventures, the kind which fail more often than not, but where his successes, including the three artifacts, spoons, make enough that he comes out ahead overall, and Maria turns those windfalls into more stable holdings. De Corso does tactfully bring up that when they leave this time, he'd like to reclaim that lab space he had set aside for the party before they left for Vistria. Sounds fair. I was surprised he kept it for us so long. They sell a few ancient Tataran masterwork crossbows and various other loot, while Raven loads up on rare metals and other materials for item crafting. When do we get the 10,000 for that plaque? It was supposed to be the next time Draven returns home. Being the Rajas, it's probably like a triggered event. So it's actually several days after Angel fought off an invasion at Polaron that Black is pushing aside the tables to make room for the teleport room. Time to get the gang all back together. There'll be a few new faces. I don't want you to freak out when we get there, but we've got a huge six-legged horse. Also an orc. What? How did you find it? But you... Oh, he's actually stuck. He can't decide which to ask about first. All right, let's teleport while well, he's still confused. I got DeCorso Chef to make Angel a doggy bag. GE7 did not originally intend to leave with them, but when they finally reveal that they've found a functioning Ataran facility, he obviously has to go. So he spent a little time magically messaging various people. Don Stormsmith, some dwarven wizards, a couple of elves. Obviously not telling him anything specific, but letting him know that something has come up and he won't be visiting them as planned. Finally, each of them loaded down with gear and supplies, they form a circle to teleport back using the Eldritch Eye linked to the one they'd used to teleport out of Polaron. All right, Draven, you are going to have to make a concentration check to keep your teleport spell. What? Because of the defenses? Nope. You know how the defenses work. You accounted for that in choosing your departure spot, etc. My concentration check is not that strong. It's not really what I do. Can I help him? If I roll, can I say I'm massaging his shoulders? You're already trying to maintain physical contact with another person in a circle while carrying a bunch of loot. Also, I don't think massaging would help. Probably distracts more than anything. I got a 27. I had to look up the DC for spellcasting while taking damage. Is there, like, a ring of fire where we're going? Well, no, because the spell would already have succeeded to get there. So, for taking 31 damage while casting, 31? The concentration DC is 10 plus spell level plus damage taken. It's like 40 something. I take the damage? Nobody else does? Yes. You were actually just hit by a very large crossbow bolt. In here? In the lab, the glass shattered out of one of the high slit windows. The poison is DC... Where, where's the poison DC? Did I not write down it? It's just like, and he has poison. What poison? I'm so pissed off right now. I have a good fort DC. You know what? You saved against the poison because I fumbled my writing a character check. Anyway, you, you don't see where somebody would be to fire down through that slit. The windows are like 12 feet up. Flying, invisible. He could have spider climb. <laughs> Wait, is that a teleport room? Who are these guys? That idiot is going to be too late. With their teleport spell interrupted, G7 takes cover and the rest, including Dwarf Daggerface, prepare for... As the double doors are blown off by some kind of alchemical explosion, Little One sees a Kuatoa in black robes charge in. Crossbow? He doesn't have one. Is he invisible? No, well, he is for a second, but it breaks when he attacks. <laughs> 
Little one, you take 9 physical, 27 electric, plus sensor chaotic, 16 untyped damage from his lawbearer charge maneuver. Then make a fortitude save against stunning fist. Don't you get counter charge bonus from your boots? No, I have to have a ready to action for that. 20 on the save. Roll to 20 or 20 total? Total. Then you are stunned for one round and will be nauseated the following round. 20 fails? What's the DC based on? Multiple feats, high wisdom. Stunning Fist is one of his signature moves. Oh, also, you gain some strange electrical based charge buff, but it goes away at the end of the turn. You also drop your weapon. I have a locked gauntlet. Then you don't drop your weapon. Just all those other things. Orb of Force for 31. I hit 27 touch? 27 touch AC? So annoying. That barely hits, though a good chunk of that touch AC is due to a temporary bonus from his charge maneuver. I want to flank him, but I don't think it'll work. Black uses Knight's move to appear behind the monitor, which is indeed immune to flanking bonuses, but Black hits him for 16 damage, triggering the Zealot Pack spell the priest had cast a week ago, giving him plus 4 to hit and double damage on his melee attacks against Kuatoa for one round per caster level. As an immediate action, he counters with a touch attack maneuver for 14 cold damage. Well, I counter counter for 5 damage. A cold maneuver? He has a discipline which is essentially like your desert wind, but all cold based instead of fire. We call it deep currents. Unfortunately, after triggering the pact, Black misses with the rest of his attacks this round, because currently the monitor's AC is like 35. MOUNTAIN HAMMER! As much as he's improved, though, DDF just does not have the to hit to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a monitor. But any ally under half health heals one hit point per round from his weird dragon shaman aura. Meanwhile, GE7 walks up and heals Draven for 22 with a cure spell. Oh right, he's a cleric. Monitor's turn. Hmm. He can hit lots of people where he is? But the squishies over there... They are squishy. The monitor tumbles past all the warriors with acrobatic ease, shoving his face up close to GE7. Don't worry, blue one. I'm taking you alive. Then he hits Draven with Deathmark, or rather, the cold version of Deathmark. It's a level 3 desert wind maneuver. It's only level 3, can't be that bad. It has words in it I really don't like. He makes the reflex save for half against Deathmark's 21 damage, energy which builds through his body and explodes out to hit GE7 as well. But with Incarnum abilities adding plus 5d6 electrical damage to the monitor's first attack each round, plus 1d6 more from a weapon crystal, the monitor piles on plenty of damage even without the maneuver. Also, Stunning Fist. Fortitude 24? Nope. You're close, though. Diamond Finn has of. How many feats does he have? A lot of feats. He does have to fight an entire party on his own. At the end of Hazov's turn, Draven's Thunder Charge dissipates harmlessly. Whatever triggers them didn't happen. Don't attack Draven. Black casts Knight's move a second time so he can still full attack the monitor, and without the plus 5 AC from Hazov's powerful charge maneuver last round, Black's double damage and plus 4 to hit allows him to beat the Diamond Fin monitor for like 90 damage. Draven gets no action thanks to the stunning fist. Little One's stun wore off last round, but due to one of Hazov's feats, Victims who fail their save are nauseated by pain in the following round, unable to do anything but move actions. And despite being severely shaken by Black's assault, the monitor still dodges the dwarf's attacks effortlessly. Uh, freezing blade! Piling on extra cold damage for one round, Diamond Fit has a full attacks, lashing out at everyone around him. He hits Black and attempts to stun him, but Black has literally about plus 20 to his fortitude, and he doesn't roll low enough to flub the difficulty 26 save. The monitor also hits Dagger Face for a large chunk of his health, but though he can do two stunning fist attempts per round, he doesn't waste it. Instead, hitting in re-stunning Little One, who is about to actually take an action. Each target hit gets a thunder charge, but this time, he actually hit enough different people to trigger his custom martial stance, Relentless Tides. If he hits three or more enemies in the same round, the thunder charges go off, each dealing 1d6 electrical damage per target hit. So 3d6 this time. Through all this, Draven is nauseated from the previous round's stunning fist, and Little One has been re-stunned, but Black still has his insane zealot pack buff going. He attacks and misses, strikes again, and Hazov uses a maneuver as an immediate action to gain plus 4 AC against that attack only, causing it to miss as well. Uh, I 
am a martyr! You can't! Did I hit again? Well, he can't use that maneuver again right away, so you get him. Take 16 times 2, 32 damage. <laughs> You did it! You killed a damn monitor! I have a really good fortitude save, I just rolled like crap. I think we're gonna have to reinvestigate that zealot pact going forward. Is it over? What about that crossbow bolt? What? Unfortunately, whoever fired that shot, Black and Dwarf Daggerface had no luck finding them. There was no sign of a shooter on the roof across the street, and if not there, the angle was such it would have had to have come from atop the rocky hill of DeCorso's Hold, which was well over a thousand feet away. You can technically shoot that far with a longbow or heavy crossbow, but the range penalty would be close to minus 20, and how would even a Kuatoa spot an indoor target at that distance? We can't find him? Oh, that's great news. And you say they were after GE7? That's what he said while death marking me. I had no idea I was being followed. Really? Not us? Either this thing was following GE7 or he was following us. He talked like he was following GE7, then only moved when we showed up, but that seems kind of dumb. Unless he was following GE7 and acted only when we were about to teleport him away. But what if he mentioned GE7 to try and throw us off? Fake you out? He's a monitor. He thought he was going to kill you all. He was wrong. But they do level up, as does Angel for her solo defense of Polaron, and the Monitor did leave a bunch of loot, a plus four amulet of wisdom for Black, though they'll have to spend a bunch of cash adding his retributive amulet ability to it. His foot wraps count as magic boots with plus two stunning fist DC, with an added ability to increase reach for one round three times a day, plus he had the obligatory weapon crystal of plus 1d6 electrical damage. Even his elite Kolos cloak was enchanted. Beyond the alchemical invisibility powers, which were essential useless to non-KTs, it had a plus two enhancement bonus to dexterity and a once per day ability to make a free attack of opportunity when an enemy misses an attack. It's too bad we can't use their invis worth a damn. And compared to the other cloaks we've seen, this has more charge efficient invisibility options, plus it can spend 10 of the 15 charges to do a swift action invis for up to two rounds, which makes an invisible blinding flash. An invisible flash? It only affects creatures which can see the invisible, but they have to save or be dazzled and lose the ability to see invisible and ethereal for two rounds. A runaway move? He should have used it. Life comes at you fast. We're gonna have to go see the dawn again. I want to parade this thing through the streets. Hauling the robed KT corpse around town gets mixed crowd reactions. Everyone's impressed, obviously, but some people are scared, even to the point of weeping. Scared that there was a monitor here, wondering why, whether they might be retribution, and there are a few who don't believe it's really a monitor, almost by definition. I mean, it died. It's just something that doesn't happen. The guards at the door are like, is that a monitor? It was. They are mortal. They can die. DeCorso has a similar reaction. Is that really a monitor? It was. How is this going to affect your relations with the KT? Um, they don't have any relations with the Deluvians. If that's an Illud monitor, that wouldn't be good. The impression you got from the Deluvian Peace Envoy, and from what you've heard of the Illud, is that Kuotoa seemed to assume that in any treaty, both sides are spying on each other, and probably taking other covert actions. But if they have a peace treaty, as the Illud do, Anything beyond information should be limited, like no assassinations. So if this was an Illud monitor, that would be pretty weird. What do you want to do with the body? I don't think we want it here. Maybe we should do something with the body, publicly. Here it comes. DeCorso isn't actually against that in general. He has no love for the Deluvians. He just doesn't want you making that kind of statement within like 50 miles of here. He's responsible for a lot of people. Right, we don't want some other KT showing up saying, don't decorate your bar with my friend. We'll just spread the word that a monitor died at the hands of... We never did come up with a name for our group, did we? At one point a while back, I could swear you guys semi came to the Liberators, but then I brought it up a short while later and everyone was like, no, that's shitty. Who came up with that? I thought we were the Hand of Liberty. We could be the little, the bad, and the angel. The littler? The little, the littler. The good, the bad, and the rainbow dash. The Hand of Liberation is okay. The Liberator sounds like a comic book, like the Avengers. You guys should call yourselves the Avengers. The Dravengers? What if they try to scry the monitor after it doesn't report in? They'll want to know what happened. 
We can't take this thing to Polaron. We have to leave it with the Corso. Just don't leave him in the Shadowfell. Don't want him coming back as a zombie. We need to keep his hands though, as an item of power. For crafting major items, right. Can we protect it from divination somehow? Can we get a lead coffin? Does that even work? Oh yeah. It's not universal, but many divinations, including scrying, state that they are blocked by a thin sheet of lead. It's not like they can just scrounge up a lead coffin at the market, but the craftsmen of the chasm can certainly make one. De Corso puts a rush on it, and the next day they have a wooden coffin lined with quarter inch thick lead plates welded shut around the handless corpse of Diamond Fen Hasoff, ready for transport. He's got a partner with a crossbow. I'm still stuck on the name. I could be totally conceited like the Black Tower. The Formidable Few. That's not bad. Just formidable? Whoever they are, they arranged to spread the word that they killed a monitor outside of town, then disappeared into the desert. And after boarding up the windows, they attempt to teleport again, this time with no nasty surprises. Unless you count Angel's news, the attack actually happened a couple days before the others returned from Corso's chasm. Angel had placed her prisoner, the Blue Dragonborn, sitting in the middle of the secondary armory, surrounded by robots, and he just sat there cross-legged, not offering any resistance. The hostage, who Angel had struck down to throw off the attackers and who Mora had later healed, did regain consciousness after an hour or so. I'm sticking by her side the whole time, just in case. I'm so glad to be free of- They didn't even know what humans eat! I had to convince them that we can only eat other mammals because otherwise they tried to bring me scorpions. How am I supposed to eat that? Scorpions are poisonous, but they're not venomous, so you could eat them. She doesn't know that. She's an archaeologist. I guess detect thoughts. Well, she rolled a 19, so she's saved. What's she hiding? Kill her. She's hiding good die rolls, apparently. Is is this some kind of woman-only base or something? Huh? All she's seen are Angel, Liz, Mora, and robots. Actually, Rainbow Dash is female, too. Anyway, fast forward a bit, and the rest of the party teleports back to the room Draven had left in the portal room, completing the round-trip ritual. Angel hadn't known when to expect them, but she's very glad when they show up. It's a little strange that they brought a coffin. It's not that strange. Well, yeah, but it's strange that you brought it with you. We killed a monitor. Nah, 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 nah. So, Angel. How much do you tell them about what happened? Do you mention attacking the hostage? A couple of dragonborn attacked, wanting to get to the ley line. I said no. One's dead, one's tied up in the secondary armory, and I saved the damsel. Yeah, saved. Nobody saw it, due to the chilling fog cloud. Guy was like, pass me the hostage. And you were like, interception! She was a member of that group of archaeologists. Also. I found some symbol I couldn't identify down in the basement. Really? So Angel, Draven, and GE7 start to head back down to examine the symbol, bringing the archaeologist with them. Wait, why are you bringing her down there? Wherever I go, I'm keeping my eyes on her. You know, she is an archaeologist, maybe she could help. Though, after seeing it, we may not be able to let her leave. The more she finds out, the more she stays here. At this point, with what she knows, can we let her leave? How secret do you want to keep this place? Would you kill for it? You might need to. She's human and everything, right? That's my question. My character's gotten better on the racial stuff, but still. I think we should ask her, do whatever she wants to do. Yeah, I don't think we should hold her prisoner, but maybe remand her, encourage her to stay with the Hand of Sirius. And the Hand would love to have someone with her experience. And for her own safety. She's already been kidnapped once. I want to bring her down to the scene. While Black and Little One check on the prisoner, the rest of you head down to the core. And she's unsurprisingly impressed by the huge room, walls of lava. The portal's pretty impressive, even though it's shut down. You should have seen what we were fighting. That's our pet, Fire Spirit. Weep. Angel shows them the symbol she found, faintly scratched near the bottom of the ramp, fortunately not covered by the hardened lava splashed out by the giant mech's explosion. But Draven doesn't need a check to identify it. Someone's been here before us? Son of a! I've got to get back and publish my research quick before I get scooped! The symbol was a marker used by members of the Hand of Sirius, the kind of thing you might leave if you were lost to let anyone from the Order know that you'd been there. And it's engraved in the stone? It was cut by something sharp. It's not very deep at all. Can the archaeologist date that carving? Can Mora help? I can take a look. She examines it for a bit, but concludes this isn't ancient. She has no way to date something with precision, but she assures them it 
can't be centuries old. Wasn't there an adventuring Indiana Jones type guy from The Hand? Or are you confusing him with Grey Pike, the dwarf archaeologist? No, he's talking about Brother Fields. Not sure he does archaeology, but he went on missions and fought stuff. Nobody told us anything about finding Polaron, though our mission wasn't expected to take us this way. Hanley and Matsomi can be ridiculously secretive, but I would think I'd be one of the first experts they'd bring in on something like this. Shouldn't the controller know all about this? They head back up to the controller room, where they also wanted to get its thoughts on what's left of Gineron controller, and to introduce it to GE7, a slightly thorny issue which momentarily distracts them. We introduce GE7 to the controller while having out all our weapons behind his back, just in case. No, GE7 doesn't make a Dark Ancient reveal and try to possess the controller. All this time, I had no idea where the portal hub was, or that any other controllers were still active. Draven pulls out the worker torso containing what's left of Gineron. What can you salvage from this? Before your counterpart from Gineron was destroyed, it downloaded what it could into this shell. Lesser controller, please grant access to all knowledge. This is Polaron Controller, Defense Ministry Access. Okay. This appears to be an incomplete fragment of Kinron Controller from the Science Ministry. As they had suspected, in the few seconds it took for Epsilon's attack to possess the controller, it had not managed to preserve much of itself. It had transferred essentially without its operating system. Not a transfer of consciousness, so much as a copy of as much data as it could salvage, plus the instructions to communicate the message about the impending portal disaster via the speechless worker body. Gineron's data cross-references with the energy spike we previously discussed approximately one year ago. However, the dataset stops minutes prior to the transit which preceded the final spike. What? A small entity was transferred through the portal. You're homunculus! Seven! Came through to here! A primitive construct, heavily damaged, emerged from the portal. So where's Seven now? Next time on Tales from My D&D Campaign. Leroy Jenkins. No, that's no good. Kyogen times two. I'm Pickle Rick. I don't even know what that means. 